Thank you, uh, everyone, for coming. Bonjour. I uh, appreciate very much that we have so many people coming to hear about a very unique camera. This camera is uh, the first luxury camera ever introduced in history. There's never been a luxury camera. We focused on making this camera very, very different from the usual cameras which are made that you can see everywhere. So we focused on making a camera that's unique, different, and luxurious for the first time. And uh, that's uh, a camera which is uh, based on our heritage, which we, you can see here. We're going to talk about that and at the same time going into new markets. So before I give any more information and talk in detail about the camera, I'd like to turn it over to uh, my colleague, Michelle, who's going to talk about the company's history a little bit. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Good morning, hopefully you can hear me. Can you hear me back? Good, good. And uh, I'll try to speak as uh, clearly and as slowly as possible. I do not speak very much, unfortunately, so um, hopefully you can understand me. So I'm going to talk quickly about uh, a very small part of our history uh, before Larry goes to talk a lot more about the camera. So uh, the Hasselblad company was formed back in 1841. It was a very much a, a traditional wholesale company and it had a small photographic department. Um, in 1941, Victor Hasselblad inherited the company. And Victor was always very much a, a passionate photographer. He loved taking images of, uh, in particular, wildlife. Very, very interested in photography. And um, the, the, the legend has it that the Swedish government approached Victor after they found a, a crashed German airplane with a an aerial camera inside and the Swedish government asked Victor if he could build one and he said no but I can build you a better one and that was the start of Hasselblad building cameras for the Swedish government which were used for aerial purposes. So in 1948, all that time ago, Victor produced the 1600F which was the first consumer camera which is very much the iconic camera for those of you who know Hasselblad. That's the iconic camera that we're recognised for. In 1957, the uh, very popular 500C was launched, and that's the landmark design that's the basis for all our cameras from there on. And of course, what Hasselblad is very much known for in its heritage was the first astronaut in space took the Hasselblad, the first being Walter Shearer back in 1962. And of course, you very famous images of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin taking images of the Earth and the Moon on the Hasselblad Luna, the very first lunar camera. And there is obviously one on show over there. So during the 80s and 90s, Hasselblad produced uh, many cameras and gradually took us into the digital age. And the H system is the camera for the last, well, since 2002 that Hasselblad produced and we're now launched with an H5D. And this is primarily uh, for professional photographers. And we have uh, a very much a VIP professional photographer here, Peter Lippmann, who I'd like to introduce you to. And Peter is based here in Paris, and Peter shot the campaign images for the Luna on a, on a Hasselblad. So thank you, Peter, for coming to. So the, the Hasselblad camera is actually still very much an object of desire, but it's in a smaller market, ideally aimed at the professional customer. But it is thanks to the Hasselblad and the iconic photographers that use the camera and the iconic camera itself that you all recognise images that are uh, used all around the world and some of them are here on display. But just for your information, <coughs> the iconic space land, space moon land. This is an image from Tim Flack where milk was poured onto the head of a tiger. Marco Groff, and there's more work there of Lady Gaga from Marco Groff. This is the 9-11 portraits. Of course, a very famous image from uh, a Dutch photographer, Hugo Bernard. 
you have taken on the hassle lad. And that's just a taste of some of the iconic images that are produced by professional photographers around the world. So I would like now to, after a very brief history of Hasselblad, hand you back to Larry to talk about the lunar camera. Thank you. So I wanted to, uh, to speak a little bit about why are we making such a camera? How can we come up with the concept of a camera that's actually not really uh, a traditional camera at all? And the camera that, uh, that we've made is basically more like a watch or a high-end car. What you can see on the camera is uh, nothing like any other camera and it's not built like any other camera. And we use a very, um, a very high specification engine inside from our partner Sony, which gives the highest quality of pictures, state-of-the-art uh, pictures at this time. And then we make a, uh, a camera from that, which is a luxury product. So we want to participate in all photographic segments. What does that mean? In the camera world, you have professional cameras, like the, uh, like the uh, one over there. And then you have the next segment, which is interchangeable lens DSLR cameras, like uh, the gentleman over there has on the table. And uh, you have a sector called the mirrorless camera, which is a fairly new sector. And that's what this camera is, which is a more compact camera with a large sensor. And you have compact cameras that are you know, the <coughs> usual small cameras with a, uh, with a um, fixed lens. So we want to make cameras in every sector. So we make a professional camera at the highest end. And then we will later this year come out with a camera which is of that type of camera, the typical large camera that is usually black. And uh, we come out with the mirrorless camera now, the lunar camera. And uh, the lunar camera is a very different camera in every way. We started out to make a camera which is, let's call it um, easy to use, so it's accessible for all photographers. Anyone who is wanting to take pictures on their holiday or the family, they can take great pictures easily. You can set the camera for a sophisticated mode so that the camera is, uh, it becomes like a professional camera. And we wanted to be able to make a camera which enthusiasts and people can have a Hasselblad camera that's not so large and heavy as our standard traditional cameras that professionals are using. We wanted to make highest quality of materials, of course, because it's a Hasselblad camera, but we wanted to make it something special and something different. We don't try to make a camera which is the same as everyone else. There's a lot of great cameras in the world just taking pictures from Japanese manufacturers. Uh, there is no point for us to make just another copy of what is already made. So we look in each segment to make cameras which are very unique, different, and they look different, and they feel different. We spend a lot of time to build the camera in the traditional ways. Um, and we wanted to make the camera in a way where you can touch and feel something different than in a camera. So we look to manufacturers who are making, for example, steering wheels of supercars, making uh, components for the watch industry, and a little bit, a little bit different. So we've looked for making a camera which is uh, having a different feel. And when you see the camera, you can feel it. It's completely different. We use leather materials. We use wood, and I'll come back to that a bit later. So we have a camera which is, for example, with uh, Tuscan leather. I think this one is. And uh, you, when you are holding leather, it's like your handbag, or it's like your wallet. It changes as time goes by. It becomes something part of you. We make very high-tech one which is out of, uh, out of um, leathers, of different types of leathers. So for example, 
if you take the interior of a car, the interior of a car has different leather in a car, a supercar, a luxury car, and then you have wood, and the wooden model, for example, and you can see a wood one here, this is uh, basically the same technique that's used in making steering wheels for, uh, for cars like Ferrari or Maserati. Sometimes people ask me, well, wood, maybe it's not going to last so long. And then I like to say that if you look at antique cars, you can see lots of cars with steering wheels that are 30, 40, 50 years old. So it's going to be very strong. And our supplier is the same supplier who makes steering wheels. Then we have a, have a model which is with carbon fiber. So we try to have different types for different people. Some people maybe like leather, uh, something like the lady's handbag, carbon fiber, or I think probably a lot of gentlemen like carbon fiber because it's very much like the interior of a high-end car and very sporty. And then we, we have different materials on the outside, which is for example, here you'll see, that's one here, uh, copper bronze. And I'll talk a little bit about the materials in a, in a minute. So we have different types for different tastes. So we made, tried to make a camera that is unique, but at the same time variable, so that people who like to have different types of style can uh, achieve it. So Tuscan leather, very soft leather like a lady's handbag, olive wood, black leather, this is the leather more like the interior of a car, and the mahogany wood, and of course the carbon fiber I talked about earlier. So how do we make the camera? Kind of, uh, we make it in the old-fashioned way. Normally cameras are produced and designed on a computer, and then the computer is uh, putting out all of the information, and you make the camera. We didn't go that way. We made it the old style way that we made the traditional Hasselblad cameras out of models, so wooden models and different sizes and shapes. And then, for example, you have here, then we take the camera and literally sit at a table and hold it and then say, well, we're going to take off some here, take off some here, change it until it feels right. And then you end up with a wooden model, which is perfect. And then that's the first time you start using a computer, is after you've got the model. And you can see some of the diagrams here. These are the design, um, the designers work to get the concept. And then after that, we make models to hold the camera and find out how does it feel. So I would hold it, somebody with bigger hands than me, and uh, some ladies would hold it, and then we would all come up with a idea of what's a what's the right feel for everybody. We made it out of different kinds of materials. So materials such as titanium, not used in any cameras. So what I'm going to talk to you about is that the way we build it, there's no camera made like this. So titanium on the top, PVD finish, which is making the ca camera very hard, like coming from the watch industry. It's very common in the watch industry to use PVD. Camera industry, not at all. We take the top of the camera is a solid block of, of uh, metal, and then it is carved. So it's not stamped out like this, it's carved. And then that makes it very uh, possible to make very complex designs like the top of this camera. We then take and want to do something a little special. Normally your camera, when you're taking video, you have a red button, right? That red button is uh, just usually a dot, a bit of paint. So we decided, well, we're going to make a luxury camera. We, instead of using red paint, we would use ruby. So the, the jewels that are on here are rubies. And it's uh, just to make the camera a little bit special and a little bit luxurious. We use carbon fiber, which is usually used in the automobile industry and the watch industry. A lot of high-end cars have carbon fiber interiors. So for gentlemen familiar with cars and uh, car enthusiasts, then this is a very familiar type of uh, 
the style, but in the camera world, there's no car no cameras with carbon fiber. It's the first time. And we use the natural woods in order to make for the unique grips. Special leathers. Um, we opened a design center in Italy, north of Venice. Our design center is sourcing materials, and the uh, materials, uh, for example, leather, uh, probably a lot of ladies maybe have handbags made with Italian leather, and it's uh, from the same type of suppliers that we get our leather for our, well, for our grips, but also for our accessories to hold the different materials. And uh, finally, we have, basically, we are designing the camera with an E-mount. E-mount is the, the patented mount of the Sony company, our partner. So our camera is technologically, the engine inside is from Sony, the highest state-of-the-art product. And then we use, uh, we, we rebuild all around it, uh, a high-end luxury camera, and uh, we supply some basic lenses, but all E-mount lenses from all manufacturers, and there's one here, which we don't sell, but you, it's available in the market from the Carl Zeiss company, which is a very high-end um, piece of optics. So you have a lot of flexibility with the camera beyond just what we do. So with that, I'd like to uh, say any questions.